So I mean, it started like like most like like you were saying. We started as kids, you know. I mean, my dad was my coach when I was young. We were four years old, and you know, when you the coach of the dad or the parents, or, not the parents, like one person would be on the field while all the little kids are running. So I started playing. You know, the, we called it the Mexican leagues. We called it was like the Waukegan Association Youth Soccer League. And so we, I started there when I was four years old, and then from there, I mean, I honestly I got lucky and. You know, people came to watch. Or there was there was a guy who came to watch Kyle Kickers. He was one of the coaches. He watched me play, and I mean, took me in, and I was part of that club. And it was like ten up until I was like twelve. I still just playing, you know, playing youth soccer. That was my first club. Then I went out to the Magic, and I spent my youth whole youth career there. You know, so that was the biggest thing. Again, like just me getting lucky, standing out, and working hard. I got you know, more opportunities, like people would come watch me play and they were interested and wanted to give me more chances, you know, I mean, I'd go to I'd go to San Diego, I'd go to Florida, I'd go to Texas, you know, so many places that, you know, my parents probably wouldn't even travel if it wasn't for me playing soccer, you know, I gave them a week of vacation while they'd still watch me play, you know, so, I mean, just playing how, how most of us all start, you know, just Mexican leagues and then having our grandma and grandpa coming to watch us play and you know the parents probably being way more into it than the kids, so that that that's where that's where it really started. Well, so I, academy, I started playing academy when I was 13, and that's like the highest division to play in. You know, at you know at a youth level, you know. So I played with the Magic, and you know we were always a good team. We had a lot of good guys like Mino Sabi, like your boy Freddie. You know, we went to JUCO, and then he's at Green Bay now. But our whole team. You know, our whole 97 group, like, we all went D1, you know, so it, it started in the academy where, you know, college coaches would come to our training sessions, you know, they'd come to our training sessions, they'd come to our games on the weekends, um, you know, you'd have combines, you know, like the chop drawer soccer combine, you'd have, you know, like just college soccer combines that you'd go to or you'd get invited to and you'd head up there and you'd have coaches, you know, go and take a look at you and so I think it was my sophomore year of high school where I was able to, like, coaches were able to call me, or junior year, one, one of those where coaches were able to, to call you, you know, and, you know, once I, I think, I think it might have been the junior year where co coaches were calling me, and that day was probably one of the funnest days, and me and my mom were just, we were just chilling, because in middle school all the time, we, I, used, I used to like hanging out with friends a lot, you know, but there was always that barrier between friends and, you know, having to go to practice, you know, right after school, you know, so I wasn't able to be, like, on the streets much or exactly. right yeah, yeah so i couldn't hang out with friends much you know but you know i still i'm still really close to all of them like now you know so it's where i grew up is like easily to fall into like the wrong path and end up not necessarily doing nothing with your life but you know not trying to you know be the best person you could be you know what i mean but there's a lot in waukegan there's a lot of people that are doing really good you know you got people that go different routes like construction you know go to cosmetology school there's a lot of people that want to do something, you know, so that was probably, that's, a, it's a good thing, you know, but then there's also guys and girls that aren't, they can't really get out, you know, like they're just implemented in it, whether it's, you know, having kids at an early age or, you know, staying at one job and not looking up to hire, like just being content with where they at, you know, so, but I mean, luckily for me, I had, you know, I had soccer, you know, and I was one of the lucky ones because there was a lot of talent. There was so much talent in Waukegan, you know, I mean, I got cousins, you know, older friends that I'd go watch play and look up to, but they just, they couldn't get out, you know, they didn't have the opportunities that I had. And which is why, you know, what I'm, the stuff that I'm doing now, you know, like I say, I say it all the time to my boys and I, I, this isn't, you know, the stuff that I do isn't for me, you know, because when I play like in the adult leagues, I play with my friends, I can see those guys and I know they're good, you know, and if they had the opportunity like I did, or if they had the guidance like I did, you know, like at home, then they would be in my position, you know, far higher, you know, because there was guys that like were really good, you know, but for me, I mean, I got, I got, I had a drive just because, you know, I had a really good support system, you know, whether it was from the older guys that I that I talked to like that were really good back then that I would watch and look up to whether it was from them or from my parents or family like they they kept me on the right path and you know I mean just my mentality is I, I didn't want to do it just for me I wanted you know I want to give people goosebumps when they're watching me play I want, you know I want guys to be hype like my friends to be really hype while they're watching me play you know so that was like the biggest thing. How did that feel playing?
here, bro. Man, every day, like, our every game that I had is like, I always wanted to do something crazy. Or not crazy, but I always just wanted to stand out, you know, because for them, you know, yeah. just because they drove down an hour away, you know, and like, probably like straight out of work. Like, my boy Lucas, he, he would come, he was at, you know, the championship or the semifinal game right after work, and it was like, what, 30 degrees? So after a long day of work, like, this dude's going to put more time and come watch me play. I got guys coming from, like, college, from, like, Lincoln College, like, taking the train and come watch. Yeah, bro, like, it's just, it's like, yeah, you know, boys, like, straight out of work, you know, like, having the games were at 7, right? So it's like they're coming from Waukegan. They'd have to leave at, well, like, 5, 6, and once you hit that, you're hitting traffic. So it's not taking an hour. It's taking, like, an hour and 45, you know? So, so there's a there's a spot there's a spot here and they call it Stacks. So every home game in the morning I'd get a haircut and then I'd go to Stacks. You have to like you gotta have a you gotta have a, a haircut because if I didn't have a haircut it's just I wasn't feeling fresh you know I wasn't yeah exactly and it, and it's cool like these you know Lex and he like he likes to give me like shit about like you know I mean trying to look good and stuff like that but you know coaches start to realize now like of course you know you want to clean your shoes you want to look good because people are watching you know and the more you stand out like the more you're getting looked at and the more you want to play good on the field just because you know people are, are watching you know so that was my biggest thing i get a haircut right away from my boy angel down at men's barber lounge it's a good though ad advertisement yeah so go down there hit up my boy angel but no nah, i'd go i'd go there and then stacks and i love stacks bro because the the workers you know most of the workers are mexican you know the cooks are mexican so i sit at the bar and the guy making my skillet you know he'd always you know you know say what's up so it was it was it was no you guys have to bro that place was good get the lumberjack skillet too I, every time i go i never get i never change i never change it i always get the same thing like what where do you get that extra you know that I mean, Almost like a pure piss, you know? like when it's I, good. I, yeah, yeah, it's good. Ah! It's good, you know, because like, well, when I got here, like, you you saw Lex how he was after he won that that game, you know. Yeah. So it's like I see it in him, and he wants that for everybody. And honestly, it's the best thing. Like, if you have a winning mentality that you want to be the best every day, like, this, 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 the ceiling's like so high for for a player, you know. And I, All right. So how did it feel to be named uh, to the Herbert Trophy watch list? That that was crazy, like that, like just, you know, I had an interview with Telemundo and you know, it, it was it was different, you know? like it was just it was just a different feeling. I mean, a, a lot of guys, a lot of guys that were on there were you know like next level, you know. So for my name to be like next to those people it was like I it was disbelief, you know. I never really thought you know that big of myself, you know. So it was like when I got it, I was like. I tell my godson all the time, I tell him, like, that's the biggest, and the kids that I train that shouldn't close any doors, man, like, you should leave every single door that's open, because, you know, God forbid you get injured, if you want to go pro right away, and they don't want you anymore, you know, but here you have four years, you have trainings, our trainers, and you have, like, good facilities, you know, at any college level, but... The biggest thing is just don't close any doors because there's so many paths that you can get to to get to the next level. You know, it's if say it doesn't work out as soon as you're done with, you know, your youth soccer and you don't get a contract right away and you want to keep trying to go overseas or something. You know, it's 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 cool. You know, but if you have an opportunity to go to college, you know, you're not you're not taking a step back. You know, because you're doing something that I know parents would love their kids to do you know like my parents dropped out of what like sophomore year of high school like my mom started working when she was 15 you know my dad same thing they had us at a young age and then off season correct me if I'm wrong you were playing with uh USL too right? yeah exactly so I was still so so you're if you're trying to go pro and you really think you can go pro that means you th you're good you know you're training every day and you really have a goal that you want to set to so you have you're good you know you're good so if you are good, like all, all those opportunities are gonna come. Like I, I played college in the fall, you know, had a month of break, but it wasn't really even a month of break because you gotta train. You, yeah, you still grind for the spring season, so it's not that hard. And then you got the spring season, it's kind of slow, you know, because you got like four or five games, but you're doing things like 
working out, like putting on more weight, you know, trying to change stuff in your game, just doing more fitness, which helps out a lot because you're probably the most fit in the spring, you know. And then you go into the summer, and like I said, if, if, if you really have that aspiration of going pro, that means, like, you're actually good. And those opportunities, like, for me, I played at FC United PDL team for four or five years every summer, you know, and I played with guys that, you know, got drafted first round, like Chris Mueller, you know, Mark Segbers, um, you, know, you know, Xavier Gomez, guys like that. So I was playing at a high level during the summer, you know, and so it's, it's fun, you know, so it, if you do really have aspirations, like opportunities come, so I'm never I'm not playing. Like guys, guys that are pro and can't are, are scrambling to find a team. Some of those guys end up in that league, you know, and it's a it's a high level league. Like it's not it's not a low level league just because it's called USL, you know, League Two. You know, it's, it's not a low level league. You know, obviously, uh, I mean, I, I'm a fan of the league. Yeah, USL, uh, USL. Right. There's a lot of uh, prospects. That Right, right, exactly. Now in, in America, like I think it's a good thing because what well, in twenty twenty six we're about to have the World Cup here. Yeah. So before then, every single year has to be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger up until the World Cup. Just so soccer is huge that we have so many people going, you know, selling out stadiums. You know. Sure, that's a question. Transition into my next question. Yeah. What do you think uh, the soccer? Football, yeah, that's for called. football, yeah, right. you know, I call it soccer, football, well, you know, it's, yeah. it, you know, it's football, you know, yeah, you say right. soccer, like, we're the only people that call it soccer, you so know. where do you think the game will be at, um, right here in the States in the next five years? I think it's just going to be bigger than what it is now, especially, you know, starting, even in college soccer, they're trying to change the whole, you know, fall and spring system, so making it two seasons instead of one, like, putting all the 18 games in, what, like, two or three months span, so I think it's starting there, and then, you know, you got the MLS, then you got a bunch of other leagues that are like USL, USL League One, stuff like that. But the bigger, the more leagues we have and the more, you know, players that we get, like top-notch players, you know, playing in those leagues, you know, it's just the higher to go, you know. And then, you know, I, at some point, you know, my biggest thing, like, I had a question was at the Rookie Symposium, like, what do you think about a relegation system? Because yeah. in the MLS, you're playing, like, not necessarily to play, but really have no you have no worries if you're in last place you know and in, in europe you know they got a relegation system so say you come to the USA right exactly so once 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 the mls gets bigger than the more the mls grows the more usl is going to grow the more usl league one is going to grow the more college soccer is going to grow just so we can feed more more Start prospects the yeah the development yeah. you know you got academies starting at u12 you know i just saw a video of philadelphia unions you know like 10 year old balling bro yeah. like it's what oh, like it's, like yeah. if that is me at that age is like you know how good could some players be you know yeah. so if those guys stay on the right path and if we really if america really wants football to grow like i mean now would be the time like now would be the time on the national team exactly Especially, I bring whatever I have here, you know, I play with confidence, you know, but my biggest thing is, is giving back to people that give me an opportunity or, you know, like, you know, put their back on the line or put something on the line for me, you know, I always want to give back and that means like on the field, especially like they're giving me an opportunity to play for their, for their club at the next level, you know, if they do give me the opportunity then you know, I make sure to give it back, like, every single game, whether it's training sessions, just being an honest player. But the, my biggest thing is, like, I like dribbling, you know. I like, I love passing the ball. That's one of the biggest things. So that, that being able to pass, being crafty, you know, I mean, taking guys out. Yeah, being creative, man. Just, like, doing stuff where, you know, like, get people, like, oh, you know, like, ah, like, stuff like that. Like, just, like, people screaming, like, you know, I like that kind of stuff, but I like I like playing the right way. You know, I don't like doing too much. I like being an honest player. You Still know, being yourself. Yeah, like that. Yeah, so that's basically yeah. myself. You know, I've always wanted to make the right decision. I never wanted to put myself in a situation where, you know, I want to keep losing the ball. You know, I hate losing the ball. So that's that's my yeah. biggest thing. You know, I really it's just you know here is the program like Lex says. You know, Minos and Sean is. Like it's just a blue collar mentality, and that, that's that's my biggest thing. You know, I try to be humble like as much as possible, and keep doing the right thing. I'm excited for my family and friends to watch me play at that next level, honestly. And you know, being able to get paid for something that I've been doing for my whole life is 
you know, it's a blessing. So it's like, as soon as I get into the system, I don't want to get out of it. I want to do this, you know, for as long as possible. I want to have a long, you know, a long career, a long successful career. You know, whether it's a couple years in the USL or go MLS or be one of the best players in USL history, you know, or whatever, whatever it is for me at the next level, like, I, I just want to be the best at it, or, you know, try my hardest in it, and, you know, make as much money as possible, because it's, I only got, like, seven, like I said, seven, ten years, so, you know, I gotta make sure I save up my money for whenever I have kids, whenever we get a house, you know, I'm, man, shoot for a deal, get me a ton of money, you know, if I do, if I am probably one of the best players, you know, at the next level, we get a ton of money, and build my own, build our own stadium, help these guys out even more facility wise or more donations whatever it is you know so that that's one of the biggest things probably the most important thing was like a support system you know so i wouldn't be here like in at this place at the time and i wouldn't keep working i wouldn't keep doing like 100 percent like everything 100 percent if it wasn't for my support system like my mom you know when i was younger like when i first started at my club my we had to borrow my aunt's car you know because we could we'd have to drive all the way to rockford or all the way to wisconsin and you know my mom's car wouldn't make it you know so things like that or my mom getting straight off work and having to drive me to training and us getting back at 11 12 you know and then her having to go to sleep and wake up the next day and go to work again you know so that that whole support system and my dad put it in his time after you know he worked a lot too um you know, but the biggest thing is just the support system is just, you know, like parents needing to put their time, if they have it, you know, like make a sacrifice, you know, for their child, you know, to just, just for the, for the best thing possible. Like my mom, I also have a sister where my mom was going to trainings with me and then having to drive to go watch my sister play volleyball, you know, and so she, she had to do a lot. So my dad too, you know, like sacrifice, sacrifice you know. Like the sac biggest, like for me, it's like that's when I have kids. That's that's one of the most important things. Is you know my life isn't necessarily pushed to the side, but you know I just have a kid that wants that has dreams. You know, and the more you support those dreams, you know, the more confidence they have in themselves of being the best person they could possibly be. You know, like my aunt Maria, she's a you know a single mother. You know, Sebastian is my godson, and he's growing up and. It's, it's tough, you know, but she's there every step of the way for him. And that's the reason why he's such a good kid now because, you know, of her, you know, and then my dad and me being around, you know, our family being around him. That's powerful. Yeah, so it's, 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 to me, it's, it's, parenting is like, it, it's, it was key, you know, like I wouldn't, I give every, all of this stuff is just for my mom and my dad, you know, my family, because it's like, mom is just like, they, they support me so much that, you know, they're not doing it for anything in return, you know, they're not doing it, asking for money, they're not asking for money, they're not asking, you know, they ask for tickets, you know, of course I'm going to give them tickets, you know, I give my cousins as much gear as I can, just so, you know, like, they're happy, but it's really just to, just to see, like, you know, their kid or, like, their family member just, that's you know, awesome. flourish, bro, that's so awesome. that, that's the biggest thing. Yeah, man, dude, shout out to you, man. Yeah, yeah it's man. cool, man. Right? Yeah. great role models, you know, talking to Thanks, man. Trying, bro. Trying. You know, I mean, I'm not perfect, bro. But with you guys too, the stuff that you guys are doing is big, man. The more stories you guys tell, it's like the more the sport's gonna grow. You know? Yeah, big time. I mean, especially us as minorities, bro. Like, there's not not a lot of us that can do, you know, things like this and you know, be successful in like systems and this in this system. You know, like it's a lot of minorities don't make it out. You know, so it's for me to be one of them. It's like. I want all of them to, you know, like I want everyone. I want everyone to do the best they can and make it, like, try to be something that they've never thought they'd make it to. You know? So that's my biggest thing.